everybody, welcome to Example of Play, the home for strategy and tactics gaming. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that button now. This video is part two of my beginner's guide for advanced tactics gold. In the first video, we covered kind of all the basics of the UI and how to build things and get your units going. In this video, we will cover combat. Maybe not every single nitty gritty detail, but I'm gonna go over all the big picture things and a lot of the considerations um, that you'll need to understand as a new player to get started and en enough to get you rolling. The topics for the video are gonna be starting with a basic example of combat, and then we'll do how to bring in multiple units into combat, then some other considerations like terrain and other things, followed by formation composition, which is a big topic of how to build out your TO and E, your table of organization, and an easy way to get started with that. Then we'll look at artillery and how to use it, followed by air and naval combat, and finally, uh, kind of the miscellaneous category. We'll look at supply, morale, and some of the other factors that you'll want to think about in the bigger picture. Start off with just a basic combat. Just two units going at each other so we can see how that works and then how the results table works just to get you a basic idea. So one thing about the way this system works is a little different from some other games in that you don't necessarily send your unit into battle against the enemy. You select an enemy and decide which units of yours are going to fight it. Um, so we'll, I'll show you how it works here. In this scenario, I am playing both sides so I can kind of set things up the way I want. Um, right now, I am the green team, the Empire of Orléans. So to attack somebody, rather than if I just say move on here, uh, with the red arrows indicate that this unit could attack those units. But if I right click on this guy, it, the attack doesn't start. It just actually, it selects this unit. Another way you can get to it is just by clicking on it and then clicking this button right here or hitting the letter A. Now we're in the select land attack participants mode. So from here, we'll actually select which unit we want to fight this guy. So in this case, we're gonna keep it simple, just two equal units fighting each other. You actually just click on your unit that you want to attack this hex, the red hex. So it feels a little backwards, but it, once you kind of do it a couple times, it makes enough sense. Um, and once you've selected it, you come down here and say this little checkbox here or hit space. You confirm which units you want to do the fight. You can also look over here and see this is the target hex and which of your units is going to attack it. Then we just hit attack to start the battle and we'll watch the uh, wonderful little animation. All right, so this is the combat and the result screen. This is as far as you're going to get as uh, of depicting the battle is just hearing some sound effects and seeing what happens. Now there's a few things here. We see up top is the defenders down here is the attackers. As uh, the battle plays out, the units are the first box here in each category um, is the units that are present at the beginning. And then if they are casualties, they move down, or if they retreat, they move into that box. So pretty straightforward. And this lets you kind of see um, which units, how they did. And then there's multiple rounds of combat. It plays out really fast, but there's six rounds of combat. And then we can click switch view, and this will show you just, uh, just numbers instead of the visual, uh, but you basically get the same information. And then you can click details if you want to really get into it. And now you can see what happened in each round of the combat. Um, so this is gonna get really nitty gritty. I'm not gonna get into that, but you can come in here to uh, see all kinds of details. But this is the screen of giving you an idea of what happened. So in this case, I attacked, since uh, I started with just the default start for the game, these were two units that were made up the exact same composition, mostly just infantry with a couple of machine guns and mortars. And as one might expect, a bunch of infantry attacking a unit that's defending with some machine guns and mortars. Uh, we took a fair amount of casualties. They took no casualties. Um, so yeah, just basic infantry without with minimal support, 
not good in the attack, especially in open ground like this. But we'll, we'll talk about terrain a little more later. And then as you can see after that fight, their combat rating is still at 38. Ours dropped to 10 on this unit from, from a start of 40. So that's uh, one lesson learned is infantry by themselves or with minimal support, not great for going into uh, direct combat, especially in open ground. Now let's look at how to bring in multiple units into an attack and from different hexes. The, to do that, we'll start with the same process to initiate the combat. I've switched sides, now I'm on the Dragon Empire, the uh, purple army. We'll click the hex we want to attack, so we're going to counterattack against these guys. We know they're weakened and they are not ready for this. We'll hit A or click this button right here to start our land attack. And then we can bring in all of these units. Now if we just click on them, nothing happens. We're selecting them, but they're not being added to the attack. You either need to click the little check mark here or just hit the space bar. And whenever you hit that, you'll see it creates a little white outline around the unit. So that tells us that unit is locked in. And we also see it up here in this target hex box that that unit is locked in. And then finally we'll do that one. So now we're attacking from these three hexes, three to one odds. That's kind of what you want in an attack with an equal opponent. And then we'll come down here and hit attack. Uh, or right before we do that, you can also say these buttons here, you can say all, and it'll select those, all the units that could attack will attack. That will make sense sometimes to go ahead and use that as a quick, easy way to do it, but you might not want all of them to attack. Um, so just bear in mind if that option is there. We'll go ahead and attack, see what happens this time. All right, so this time the attackers won. Now we had three to one odds. Uh, we had three units attacking, so we get a column for each one. We took a couple casualties, but the enemy, they were weakened. They had lost half their units in that last fight, and they were not ready for another fight. They were a bit disrupted, so our three units were able to easily overwhelm them, send them in the retreat and take out most of them winning that combat. Next up, we're going to talk about some general considerations for combat. Now, this could be a, an hour spent talking about every little detail on this, and I'm not the expert, so I'm not going to try to get into it. I'm just going to talk about some of the general stuff and then point you to where you can learn more about the details if you want to. So most of the units, they're going to do kind of what you expect. Most of the terrain is going to do kind of what you expect. If you want to get the specifics, I actually found that there is a strategy guide for this game. It was posted over 10 years ago, but most of it's still applicable. I'm going to put the link down in the video description so you can see that. And there's some other great stuff there too. There's a, a, there's a whole post uh, newbie guide that was posted a decade ago, but a lot of it's still applicable. Um, and you can jump in there and read some more. Uh, I, you know, instead of me reading it to you, uh, what I found there, you can read that. But we'll talk about some of the general things to think about here. Now, obviously, terrain is a big factor. We see a variety of terrain here. Um, you know, you've got just your regular fields. You got plains. If you can click on the little question mark here, you'll get some stats. Um, this will show you combat modifiers. Um, formations that are affected by it, entrenchment stats. This is important. It lets you see how much entrenchment uh, infantry can get and artillery or other units as applicable, but the kind of the big ones is usually the infantry, how much they get automatically and then how much they can build up to. So 100 entrenchment for planes, that's kind of the default. But if we look at a field, they actually get a little bit more, 125. If we look at a swamp, it goes down. Maximum entrenchment is 50, so harder to defend in a swamp. If we, and then also you can get a little text description here. Doesn't always explain everything, but it does give you an idea. So swamps, bad for offense and defense for armor especially. Not a good place to be just in general. Hard to defend, hard to move through for your motorized mechanized units. From this screen, we can also see all the other different kinds of terrain, including uh, if there's snow, rainy seas, all kinds of stuff. And then you can come over here and see different kinds of locations um, and how those can affect it. So 
some of the important ones to look at would be like if you built a fortification, a fortress, uh, anything along those lines, you do get some entrenchment stat bonuses. So you would get whatever the landscape gave you. Um, so the, a C, obviously not much, but if we were doing fields and we would see, okay, the default is max 125. If there's a fortress there, they start off with 100 more entrenchment and it can build up another 150 over that. So 275 would be the max if there's a fortress in a field. Um, and then, of course, if we looked at, say, high mountains, mount, low mountains, high mountains, uh, they'd be getting 250 plus another 150. So we're looking at yeah, like 400, four times as high as like the default uh, open plains. So that can be very important for keeping your infantry alive, sticking them on like a mountain here, building some fortifications on it, depending on the map, you know, so the map's going to be randomly generated every time there's, that might be advantageous. Uh, you know, it might not help you much to build a mountain down here, but it might help you a lot to fortify this little, uh, mountain ridge here and here and force your enemy to fight here in the plains or, you know, like on this map, just go up the wide open up here. So, that's a lot to think about as you're preparing your defense and your attack of what can play into that. We can also look at the different kinds of units. And like I said, again, not going to go into every little detail on them. But if we were to pull up, uh, we'll go here so we can see everything. The big list. Um, actually, we'll look at it from here because we can access the uh, information about them. So any, when you're looking at your units here, select say, uh, well, militia. So that's a special unit that the Chinese faction gets. You're going to get a little text that gives a general description, but it's not always uh, the most useful. Uh, basically, these guys are cheaper than regular infantry, but even worse. So I guess just for uh, quantity over quality, if you want to go with that strategy, you can also look at the stats here. This is going to give you a bunch of details that uh, I'm not going to try to explain because I don't understand all of them, but uh, some are probably self-explanatory and some are a little confusing, but you can go in here and see that. Now, uh, the link, if you go to that, to the strategy guide, it actually gives some very narrative, easy to follow advice on uh, what some of the units are good for how to use them, some general guidelines of what they do. So uh, like some of the things, um, mortars give your units a little more offensive power. Machine guns are going to be better for defense. Obviously, uh, tanks are going to be good against infantry that don't have anti-armor ability. And then you can actually get different kinds of tanks. So higher level tanks can be better, of course. And then you can get different levels of infantry, like the Rangers or other more elite units. And you're going to want to mix, you're going to want a combined arms force that mixes a lot of those different types of units together. Just infantry, you could put a thousand infantry in a unit that's not going to do that great. Submachine gun guys are better in fighting in close terrain, like forests and cities. The riflemen are kind of your across the board guys. So a good mix of things or specialized units that you're aware of how they're going to be most capable of, of being employed on the map. Uh, just looking for a couple more artillery. We'll cover that here in a minute of how to use that. And then transport. We'll look at that when we go to formation composition because you're going to maybe want some transport in your units um, and then things to think about of which of those to use to give your units the desired mobility or the desired carrying capacity for that, the type of units you're looking at. Now we'll look at formation composition specifically. What do you want to put into your formations? Uh, how do you design them? And if we go down here to the model designer, so in the first video I showed you how this worked, how you can add a unit and you can manually say, okay, I want rifles I want uh, 30 of them and then you can customize what the logo is going to look like or the icon is going to look like for that unit what's going to be named you can add more format you can change what kind of formation it is you can add more so we could change this we could have uh, some 
Yeah, we'll throw in some mortars. Throw in some uh, yeah, some jeeps. Sure. So anyway, we could look at that. You could do that manually, but I have a nice shortcut for you guys that I found. If you follow the link that I post down there, there's actually a, t a file that has a bunch of pre-built kind of standard formations that'll give you a nice starting point. I'll show you how that works because uh, it took a little try, a little mess around for me to figure out how to install it. So if we come into, here we go, the info for newbies, uh, that's that link. And thanks to TAC2i for posting all this stuff back in 2014. Uh, if we come down here, there's a whole bunch of good stuff here. Um, you can watch this video to kind of get started, but if you want to get more help, more details, I recommend uh, browsing around in here. Uh, there is the strategy guide, which if you look at that, I'm not going to read it to you, but it offers you a bunch of nice, easy to read text of some of the things to think about, some strategy tips for the game, really good stuff here. And it covers all the different categories of infantry, artillery, aircraft, uh, just giving you some general guidance on that. So very useful. But if we want to get started with our organization of what our units look like, well, you can come down here, you can download this file. Um, and it's basically, this is a text file. And what I found was if you just stick this in, it doesn't work. Um, but if you come in here and just create some kind of unit, and then export it so that you create a, a file, like a template for this screen. Then you can go in there and it'll be in your saved games folder under advanced tactics gold. And so like mine was called example. You can just open that with a notepad or whatever. And then the text you got from that download, just stick that text in here. So if you do that, now you can come in here and instead of manually creating all sorts of different units, which I'm sure some of you might love to do that. And some of you that kind of be a daunting task. This is just to help you get started with some basic units. You can import it, stick that text in there. We open it up and now we've got a nice assortment of pre-built units uh, to get you started. And you can of course customize these as much as you want, or just use them as kind of a baseline but we can look at what they've got for an infantry uh, unit. Got rifles, machine guns, mortars, submachine guns, bazookas, and some horses. Now the horses uh, are not a motorized unit, don't use any fuel, are on wheels, so they're not restricted from movement as much, uh, but they give you a little carrying power to help with those mortars and machine guns so that your unit moves a little faster. And you can see down here how much the unit weighs and how much carrying it, pet capacity it has with the horses. Uh, just for fun, we'll look at, so what if we set it to just uh, like one horse that drops our carrying down to 10. So each horse gives us 10 carrying capacity. And now our movement is uh, down to foot. But if we come back here, we give them some more, some more horses. Now our carrying capacity is 100, greater than our weight, and our movement type is horse. So our unit's going to be moving a little faster because they've got enough horses uh, that everyone can ride instead of walk. So that's uh, one thing to think about. Now here they got an assault. It's a little heavier on more riflemen with infantry gun. Just a little more specialized. Cavalry, just cavalry, simple enough. Armored recon. And these, like I said, these are just examples um, that just kind of give you some starting points of types of formations you could build. Um, some artillery, engineers. Now the core unit, so this would be a headquarters unit. It has some trucks, it has uh, more staff and a few riflemen to give it a little defense. We've also got aircraft um, and some uh, naval units also. So this is just to give you, get you started, uh, but I found this very helpful. The idea of creating all these different unit types is kind of fun, but also kind of tedious. So that gets you started and gives you an idea of from someone who's played the game a lot, um, what they had as kind of some standard unit templates to start with. So I thought that was useful. And also just an example of you come in here, you can see uh, the weight of the unit and then the carrying. So we'll, we'll say if we change those horses to be the trucks instead, 
we would see that, okay, now 10 trucks can carry 200 capacity and now our movement type is wheel. So we're gonna be moving faster, but we can't necessarily move over mountains and rough terrain like we could before. And we're gonna be using up a lot of fuel. Um, so that's some considerations when you're building out your formation, how mobile do you want them to be, but how resource intensive do you want them to be? Artillery is up next and how to use it. So we've built some basic artillery, stuck them in right here. The thing with artillery is that they're not gonna cause a lot of direct damage to the enemy units, but they're gonna lower their readiness quite a bit. It's gonna make it easier for your other units to attack. And the other advantage is that artillery can attack from multiple hexes away. So this basic artillery can attack from a couple hexes away. They can be behind the line and fire at these infantry over here in this hex. The way you do the artillery attack is pretty similar to the regular ground attack, but we'll select this uh, button right here or hit the letter B. And then it's basically the same. We'll select the artillery we want to use or hit all or hit uh, just select these guys, hit space. Now we're ready to attack and let's see what happens. We get the same combat screen, very similar. As we can see our artillery, not take any casualties because they're firing from a distance. The enemy taking minimal casualties, some retreat, some casualties. But the important thing is that they've dropped their readiness and effectiveness has dropped a ton. Their combat value is dropped down to one. It's going to make it very easy for our follow on attack with our infantry in this hex who are going to almost select them, have them attack. And now the odds were still in our favor, basically three divisions to two, but look at this. We wiped them out, not just push them back, but like caused significant casualties, wiped them out, only took one casualty on our side. Uh, so that hit on them with that artillery first did a ton of damage to their readiness and their morale and softened them up for our infantry to attack and take almost no casualties. So that's how you can see artillery, very useful, very simple to use. You just got to build a few of them, get them up near the front, and then just use that artillery button to uh, make that attack. The other type of special units you might use would be aircraft and naval units. Now this map, there's no ocean. I'm not going to go too much into naval since it's pretty similar, obviously, on the water instead of the ground. But the aircraft and naval do give you a couple of similar but different options. I have a few fighters here, nothing big. They do have a one factor to consider is interception. So fighters can intercept enemy aircraft automatically. You can come here and set uh, some options like what the set, how you want them to attack depending on their readiness level. So they'll only do the intercept if it's greater than the readiness level specified or to not do that at all. You can also set them to do uh, anti-supply damage. So that's to uh, try to knock out any supplies. Uh, but to do one other thing they can do is an air recon mission. So you can hit this button. Uh, these guys, I've kind of messed up their logistics uh, while I was building some other units. And so they are not very ready. Uh, and so they can't do the air re recon mission at all, except for where they're already at. Uh, but basically that will send them out flying out to uh, recon an area. You can also use them for an air attack. So you would click the hex you want to attack. And just now we just come down the line here to this button, airstrike. And it would be kind of the same thing. Our guys aren't ready enough to do the attack, but uh, basically that's how it would work. Then they'd attack from the air, which as you know, there's not just fighters, there's, just, there's bombers and all those different types of units. If you look at that strategy guide, it kind of explains uh, the use case for the different units but pretty easy to do as long as you know where the buttons are, like where you need to kind of click to make that happen. Naval units, we don't have any here, but we can look at how you would do that. So there is sea combat. If you had units on the sea versus the ground, you would just do sea attack. We don't have anything here that can uh, do it, but that's that button and then shore bombardment. So much like artillery, if you had a battleship parked out here somewhere, they could fire into that hex and do a bombardment. So pretty straightforward. There's just different buttons to use aircraft, different buttons to use 
uh, naval craft and then aircraft can do like those recon missions you also need to consider building airfields um, so air bases for those aircraft to operate out of i'm not the expert on using the aircraft just yet but that's uh, the basics of how you get started with those guys all right so for the final topic we're going to cover is supply morale and some of the other stats that are important to consider as you go to war and how it's going to affect the effectiveness of your units. As we saw just a minute ago, uh, hitting enemies with some artillery to bring down their readiness uh, and morale makes them a lot easier to attack. We were able to hit that one unit, take almost no casualties on our side and wipe them out because we took the advantage of uh, outnumbering them, but hitting them with artillery first. And where you can see that is this, these stats down here along the top and then also related down here along the bottom, the supply. So AP, that's just action points. That's every turn they get 100. Uh, when they move, do actions, fight, that's gonna use up action points. So um, that's just kind of a measure of how much the unit can do in a turn. Readiness is important, and that's gonna set basically how ready that unit is to fight. That's gonna go down when they fight, when they move around, different things. Um, but also whenever they're not in supply, or have issues there you want to keep that readiness as high as possible it'll grow up gradually on its own but those other factors can bring it down experience is basically what it says so the more experienced unit is the more effective they're going to be in combat it, can, it will gradually go up um, the manual says to about 64 uh, just and think of that as the unit training and it going up gradually over time but it slows the higher it goes and then eventually it tops out so when you just build a unit, even if they're way back here, they will gain some experience. But to get more experience, you're going to need to actually send your guys into combat. Um, so whenever they go and actually do some fighting. So these guys, looks like they maxed out at around 40. They've been sitting there the whole game. They're at 40, where these guys have been in a battle. So they're at 44, 47. They've been in a couple of fights. So their experience has increased. That's going to make them more effective morale um, so this is going to depend on various factors but this is how likely the units are to start retreating in combat so you want to keep that as high as possible by keeping them in supply and not letting them get beat up too much and then entrenchment so we talked about that a little bit earlier a unit has a baseline level entrenchment that they're going to reach uh, for infantry and artillery uh, when they're sitting in a space and then depending on what that location has if it's a city if it's a fort a fortification or a swamp you know their max entrenchment is going to be different uh, down here at the bottom we can see supply and so these guys all have like a little yellow versus instead of green in the corners because they're not very well in supply at the moment um, you can see here they have 12 supply on hand but they requested 58 they only got 25 and that's because i wasn't producing enough supply back home and if we find my Supreme HQ, we can actually see the logistics tab here it gives you even more details, but we can see that uh, 1100 supply was requested, only 500 was sent out. So all these units are running a little low on supply, which hasn't affected their readiness just yet, but uh, their morale's not doing great. So that's gonna affect those units. You wanna keep all these numbers as high as possible. And again, you can look at the manual in the little strategy guide to get some tips on those things. But those that's where you can see those factors. And you might be wondering, yeah, why are my units, um, they look like they're, they should be doing well, but they're not. And it might be because these numbers aren't too good. Um, just a reminder, if you don't remember, we can click this button right here or hit F5 to turn on the supply layer. And this lets you see um, kind of how your supply looks. So all right now we got lots of, we got lots of rail, Railroads built through our territory, so our supply situation is really good. Uh, we're just not making enough supply at the moment. And you can't see it on here, but if we look at the reports, uh, that doesn't have supply either there. Uh, but you can go and at least look at your Supreme HQ, see how much supply is being produced, how much is being requested. And you want to keep that high uh, because if you run out of supply, your guys are not going to do very well. That about wraps it up for this video. I know I didn't go into the nitty gritty of every kind of combat situation, uh, but my goal was to just, for new players, to get you familiar 
with the different different factors that go into combat to show you how to initiate combat since it's a little different in this system but once you understand it it's not that bad um, you select the hex you're going to attack and then select the units you're going to use instead of the other way around uh, but once you get familiar with this you'll notice that uh, the guy who made this game vr designs who also made shadow empire which i don't know i thought about making a guide for that but that might be a little too much even for me um, and also the Decisive Campaigns series. Uh, those games, if you play them, you'll notice the UI, very similar, different but similar, and uses a lot of the same sort of mechanics. So if you learn it here, it might make it a little easier to transition into some of those other games. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, I'll probably try to do one more video to hit uh, some other topics, frequently asked questions. Uh, so put those in the comments. Let me know if there's anything you want to see covered in more detail. But I think I've covered all the basics to get you started with Advanced Tactics Gold. So thanks for watching. Uh, hit that like and subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks. Bye.